Now I have read that marijuana grown in the islands is a bigger cash crop than pineapples and sugar cane. Definitely. It's second to tourism. Tourism makes more money out here than I, but it's running a close second. <laughs> I mean, like, if you look at, like, say, the 70s on Big Island in the, in the town of Puna, Puna was a thriving cannabis industry with grocery stores, you know, car dealerships, all raised on dollars. And so, and then when, you know, like Operation Green Harvest and stuff came in, they totally just wiped these places out, and now they're like some of the biggest crisp um, areas in our world. Most of the manpower was local, but by far the lion's share of the money underwriting the August to October operation was federal. Green Harvest cost a minimum of a quarter of a million dollars, and that's not counting a $3 million police helicopter destroyed apparently by accident. Now Hawaii's police chiefs are asking Uncle Sam for one and a half million more dollars to rent a Coast Guard cutter, the Customs Services dog, and lots of National Guard helicopters. Hawaii is the first state whose National Guard unit's been called to duty because of a Hawana emergency. So, welcome to High Design History. This is LMC, otherwise known as Luke. My name's Luke, by the way, if folks aren't aware. So, I want to do this video because I'm heading to Spain right now, but I'm doing it not, not the most typical format that I usually do. I like to do voiceovers more so, but because it's quicker to kind of just get in the camera and then talk about this and edit it up, I'm doing it this way. But this is about Hawaii, obviously, as you guys can see. In Hawaii, I was there visiting about three or four months ago. I actually met up with a good friend of mine, Peter. Shout out to you, Peter, uh, for making this all happen. I was able to go to the North Shore of Oahu. I was staying on Maui, but I, I flew over to Oahu for the day. And I was able to go and see some of the, um, you know, collectives, these medical collectives that are there um, on the North Shore of Oahu. And really though, what this overall story is about, guys, is about how when the government put all this money into enforcing, um, you know, getting rid of these growers on these different islands in Hawaii and all throughout the country, obviously, it really has hurt the current day. It has hurt what's going on now. So back when, in the 1970s and 80s, when you know Reagan put into play the you know the war on illicit substances. Um, you know, back in the the Ronald Reagan days, um, Hawaii was deemed as a major uh, site, and um, extreme measures were taken to eradicate from the islands. So we kind of come from that world. You know what I mean? It's very uh, it's very scary. Rift. In Hilo, I talked with Guy Paul, chief of police for the county of Hawaii. Because of the man hours involved, it's much more cost effective to take the plant out of the ground and end the problem before it starts. Operation Green Harvest cooperative effort by the police, federal narcotics officers, the National Guard, and the Coast Guard to eradicate her from the islands. Helicopters are used to spot him, which officers claim is easily identified from the air because of its distinctive blue-green color. Raids are conducted usually during the peak harvest season when plants are 10 feet high. Tons of men are confiscated during the operations, and police say every plant is destroyed. Well, as soon as we get it, uh, we put it together in the dump trucks, take it to a burn site and burn it immediately. We make sure of that. We can't afford any slip-ups. Now I've read that green harvest and your green harvest rates, you only get like 10% of up. Well, that's a pretty good figure. My men estimate on this island that we get 10 to 20%. But uh, it's a start and it's something that has to be done. Last year they pulled 15 tons off the big island and they really didn't make a dent in the market. And it hurts everybody when green harvest comes in, not just the growers and the middlemen or the dealers, it hurts the businesses because, you know, people go out, they, I mean, growers go out and buy food and new cars and Jeeps, and they pay cash. Now, the whole idea of this, this, this concept called neoliberalism, right? Neoliberalism is really about how a con local economies get destroyed, right? It's about globalization. Globalization means they specialize here for this, specialize here for that. 
But really, what we need to be looking at is how do we bring, we're, we're now in this period where we are deglobalizing. We are in deglobalization. The reason why we did globalization in the first place was to beat the USSR, right? The whole trick, the whole, the whole game was America, the West was gonna trade, you know, a globalized system, meaning that we're gonna be less sufficient, we're gonna be less reliant on our own, you know, our own land, our own, you know, economy, and more reliant on other economies all across the world to then tie us in together and to make them embrace capitalism, right? And therefore go against the USSR, right? So the USSR fell, obviously, and now we are in this really messed up time where we're deglobalizing. Now, deglobalization is a good thing for us common folk because we're going to not be get, we're, we're not going to be getting, you know, losing all of our jobs even though we already have, you know, to China or the, you know, whatever, right? But we are now moving back into a system of being needing to be self-reliant. And so things like this with with Hawaii being you know, having operation Green Harvest, you know, conducted throughout and still to this day, pretty much still being conducted. It really has hurt the local economies of these different places, including Hawaii. I mean, like if you look at like, say the 70s on Big Island in the, in the town of Puna, Puna was a thriving industry with grocery stores, you know, car dealerships, all raised on cash dollars. And so, and then when, you know, like Operation Green Harvest and stuff came in, they totally just wiped these places out and now they're like some of the biggest crystal um, areas in our world, you know what I mean? A lot of Now, what happens when you destroy a local economy? What is the process of that? It's when you get rid of the manufacturers, the producers of said commodity. Now, Green Harvest, right, what they pretty much did is they got rid of all of the growers. So, because there are no growers now, or there are very, there's very few now, the demand still needs the supply. So there's not enough supply and the demand, right, is still extremely high. So what happens? Well, you're gonna import a lot of stuff. And typically you don't wanna be a country, a state, a region, a town. You don't wanna be an economy of any size that is importing large amounts of a commodity because what's gonna happen? You are more reliant um, on companies that are in different states, companies that are in different, um, you know, countries. And what happens is the local economy suffers because everything gets imported in instead of being exported out. You want to be an exporter, not an importer. You know, in my, in my, in my data, um, Hawaii's um, cannabis is about 70% imported. So, so we have a lot of uh, import that comes in, illegal import. Uh, we do have a lot of legacy growers and stuff and a lot of great growers here in Hawaii, but they haven't been given the I guess you would call it the, the, the green flag or the, the flag to come forward and be um, productive members in our society. They're always forced into the background, you know what I mean, into the black market and stuff like that. So that's what we're trying to deal with right now. And then, you know, the oversaturation on the mainland is, you know, we ship so much stuff in here, including agriculture. You know, we ship in 90% of our agriculture here to Hawaii. So you can tell that- Our price are a little bit higher of certain things. Yep, you know? exactly. And then this is falling right behind it. You know what yeah. I mean? So all these stuff that, you know, they can't get rid of in California, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, it's all coming here, you know what I mean? Very easily, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of people that consume Kelly, and I think, you know, and that's why the market's so big here. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's been thriving for a long time. Now, the messed up thing about this entire situation, right, is after the growers have been eradicated throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? They finally in 2000, opened up medical. Now the thing about these medical licenses is there's kind of two groups in this overall sphere of things. There's kind of more of the corrupt corporate, you know, aspect to it. And then there's the, you know, medical patient collectives, right? And so Jay, who is uh, the person I've been interviewing here, he runs Care Wailua. You know, he's leading that front in terms of the equitable, looking out for the locals, looking out for medical patients that are actually trying to get, you know, products that are affordable. It's medical products. So these are medical, you know, patients rather than getting charged abhorrent numbers over on more of the corporate side. And also there is a lot of corruption going on, I would say, to a certain degree, allegedly, because, well, why is there only six licenses being given out? Whenever they limit licenses, always should be red flags going up in your head. Um, they, they established the medical program in the year 2000, uh, Medical Day. 
um, but they have yet to really stand up any great policies and regulations that allows for uh, our, our legacy growers, um, our people to get access to affordable medicine. And so that's kind of what we're going through right now. Um, in 2016, um, they established um, dispensaries. Uh, there was five dispensary licenses given out. You had to have a million dollars in the bank. Um, they were basically given out to accountants and bakers. Um, and then within those dispensaries, they have four cultivation sites. So it's basically a monopoly. Um, since they've opened up, they have not um, gotten the people of Hawaii um, affordable medicine. And when I say affordable medicine, um, in my opinion, it's like when Colorado opened up, an ounce was $200, $250. Uh, they're just barely getting to that world right now, and they've been in business for about five years. What's, it, what's, the, what's the price right now? Uh, the, the price right now is about four to five hundred dollars an ounce. What? Yeah, yeah, four to five hundred dollars an ounce. Yeah, yeah, You're sixty and eight. That? So it's recreational all day long, uh, but under the disguise of a medical program. So, and every time we attempt to work with dispensary owners and dispensary people, they just fight us every day. They're like, we can't afford to get people that that type of count. Yeah. Uh, we're lucky to be operating the way we are. We are operating in the gray area, but we are um, operating legally with um, each person's allowed 10 plants here in Hawaii. And so what we do is we just allow patients to come on and be patients for our farm and have our grow site. And then they can help us grow here and do all kinds of things. And that allows them to um, be involved with the growing, be involved with the medicine that they're smoking or using. And also um, it brings the prices down a, a, a significant amount, even with testing and everything, it's still really, really affordable for our medical patients. And you know, we've only been on this site for about three years and we started here with about hundred people and we're now up over like 1400 people. So it just won't stop, you know what I mean? And, and when I say it won't stop, it's like people come through the gate and actually need this medicine to deal with pain management, to deal with sleeping at night, to deal with cancer, and they have nowhere else to go. And so, and that's why this, this site has gotten so big. Um, and it's also put me in a spot where I need to be responsible and help people out. And so now I've become a spokesperson for our farm and trying to fight for better rights and, 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 and medical rights that allow us to operate and help people out. You constantly can't afford that medicine and they've finally got to come to the farm. Cause trust me, there's people that I, I see the people from all walks of life. They don't want to come to the farm. They rather go to one dispensary like so. But after a while, spending all that money, they don't get it. They're just like, show me where I can get cheaper medicine and better medicine. And here we are. The licenses were given out to people. Um, it was a lottery, but once again, to even get in the lottery, you had to have a million dollars in the bank. So that really shortened up the pool. You know, we had, um, even our governor that's in power right now applied for a license, you know what I mean, Josh Green. So back in the day before he was a lieutenant governor, he was a doctor, a medical doctor, he still is a medical doctor, and he actually applied for a license and didn't get one. So, you know, a lot of the licensee owners are people that are uh, accountants and bankers and ex-politicians and things of that nature, or major agriculture companies, you know, that own big agriculture companies. And those were the people, mostly speaking, that came in and got the licenses and started to try to set up dispensaries, really not knowing how to set up dispensaries, not knowing that the first and the best thing in the world is to you know, help medical people out. And so you know, without that really being the focus, they just went in and bought really expensive buildings and set up indoor grows and didn't really know what they were doing. And so, you know, of course, that affected our whole medical market. Um, well, I think it all came about during the Ronald Reagan days and that really forced the state of Hawaii that if they wanted to work with federal dollars, they were going to follow federal guidelines, you know what I mean? And even today when they develop their dispensaries, they're very heavily weighing on, well, what is the federal government going to do to us if we don't do A, B, C, or D? Yeah. And so that's really why they made this really lock and key dispensary system that only, you know, only really uh, does minimum tax dollars and only pays a few people instead of local jobs. Politicians have their friends and you know and their friends pay a lot of money to make sure certain bills are passed and stuff like that and that's you know we call it lobbying right yeah. I mean that's lobbying in the United States it's, a, it's alive and kicking and so if you're not in the lobbying world and you're not helping to lobby for better laws for say example can you know what I mean you're not gonna get heard you know what yeah. I mean and that's what we, us at Kara Wailua we've been lobbying we've been working with lobbyists to say hey we're here we want to set up a resilient program for the state of Hawaii that's like hands down one of the best programs in the world, you know. But, um, you know, the only way you get 
to, to be seen in that in the politician world is by lobbying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I mean that's why we went into lobbying. You know, when I first signed my first lobbying contract, and you know the the money involved and stuff, I just couldn't even believe it. I was like, is this even legal? Is this real? You know what I mean? But the minute I start to understand, you know, because a lot of us weren't raised to be like government officials and understand what's how the whole system works. And so, as me as a you know a 54 year old guy that only learned it like 10 years ago. I'm learning the fast track of it and how to be involved and you know you just can't not be involved and change things you know and that's a that's a big deal and so you know by working with lobbyists and understanding you know who the lobbyists are for the dispensaries you know and who are the people that are behind the dispensaries you know and and hiring our lobbyists and so our lobbyists are friends with those lobbyists you know what I mean and bringing those people together to go hey there has to be a middle ground here somewhere you know what I mean our lobbyists care why Lua is lobbying for us and they're paying us to come forward and there's got to be a middle ground here and so you know that's what we're trying to do you know our you know, a lot of people feel like Kerwailu is like it's just too loud why are you making such a big deal why don't you just let things be the way they're going to be you know what I mean and I think in my opinion what a lot of people don't understand is that if this place goes recreational and there's only a few businesses that really um you know are profit from that that all of our small businesses are going to come under harm through law enforcement or whatever else and you know and and you know, punitive stuff, you know what I mean, where they're going to start shutting down everybody and they're going to start doing almost like a, almost like a drug war all over again, you know what I mean, that if you're, if you're not a legal entity selling, we're going to shut you down, you know what I mean, oh, yeah. and so, and I think a lot of people just feel like, well, just leave it alone, let the black market do what it's going to do, and so, you know, I, I think for us and a lot of people that I know, they want to grow and feel good about it and feel like they're doing it by law and not have to look over their shoulders, and that's, yeah. you know, that's what I feel like we've been doing. So. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, I want to say really quick, this is, you know, an overview of this overall issue when it comes to Hawaii and this plant. I think there's a lot more to the story. Like I said, I was a little, you know, a little bit rushed with this. So I want to get this video out. It's been a while. But I want to say, I hope Hawaii makes the right decision. I hope they don't go full on corporate. I hope that they actually care about their people. I hope they care about their local economy because really what happens when big corporations come in is it really just decimates the local economy and just hurts the people these politicians represent. And unfortunately right now, we're in a system where the politicians don't represent the people, they represent the corporations, right? It's unfortunate. And that's one of my life goals quite literally is to stop corporate power, meaning to get money out of politics. Now, this is a very complicated issue when it comes to why I'm just an outsider coming in. I just wanted to shine a light on this. But I do hope that, like I said, people like, you know, Jay from, from Karawailua, people like Peter. Peter's a 21-year-old, 22-year-old, who I hope that Peter one day will be able to, once, you know, in a few years, will be able to actually operate as a local, you know, his multi-generational Hawaiian family will have a, be able to get a stake in this industry and in this market because it's really important. And the reason why I, I really, you know, I have a lot of interest in this world. I have a lot of interest in this life. But the reason why, you know, I happened to pick this plant is because one, I grew up in it. I've been around it forever. But two, it's because it's one of the perfect lenses to look into what's happening on a broader scale throughout America and the world today. Because when it, there's never been a commodity that's been around for thousands of years that is now just being made legal and so it's a great way to look at the broader issues in society anyways i know i'm rambling here a little bit but i want to say thank you guys so much for rocking with me i really appreciate y'all make sure to hit the like button make sure to subscribe button what's your thoughts let me know down below in the comments anyways i'm about to head to spain here in about nine hours so should be cool got some content coming there anyways design history i hope you enjoyed it appreciate y'all this is lmc signing out Thank you.